Hey, are we live? Thank you very much for inviting me to chat with you. And um, thank you so much for, for, for having me on. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> what are three important qualities you look out for in candidates um, that you help place? Or Beth? Well, I, um, so so one biggie, and and we we use a we use a, a real specific process. So we use a recruiter, and we have knockout questions. So hopefully, we're not even having to review uh, an app if they can't make it through kind of the knockout question phase of it. Uh, secondarily, we do a, a video chat interview that we record and we do prior to sending it up the chain. And the third thing, which is maybe the most important thing, is we use Colby Right Fit. So K-O-L-B-E. So Colby measures the way people take action, their mode of operation, the way they work. And Right Fit, if, if I'm going to work for David, well, David would have taken his part of Colby. When I take Colby, it lines up whether I'm a right fit, not just for the job, but am I a right fit for the job? And will I work well with David? And I get an A, B, C, D, F score for that. And we find that that has made such a significant difference. I believe we've used Colby right fit for the last three years. And, um, you know, the three years prior, uh, the I, I can tell you it works better to make sure we have Colby right fit. So, David, I'll talk to you more about that offline if you'd like. I see you writing that down. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. How fascinating, um, just for my own curiosity. Um, David, do you have three important qualities that you look out for, or do you guys have your own way of measuring things like strengths or personality or anything like that that you do? Yes, to both those. Um, y y you know, when when you're when we're bringing people into the hospitality industry, you know, just people that are genuine, people that are real, people that have you know high integrity, you know, self accountability, uh, but most importantly, people focused. You know, and and you get that in the conversations, and you get that in the interview, and one of the benefits. That if you're if you're a recruiter that um, like, you know, I encourage my team and my general managers not just to do an interview. Like if you do an HR interview or you check in the boxes, you're missing out on so much information. You know, we want to kind of create an experience, you know, when we're talking to them. So that way, you know, there's a relationship and there's a connection. And with that, though, comes the ability to kind of set the tone, you know, set the expectations and you have a relationship with these people that when they are not doing that, you can be like, Tiffany, you know, you and I <laughs> talked about this, you know, like, what, right. you know, what, you know, you're so people focused, what happened, you know, and a lot of times you'll hear, oh my gosh, it was, it was just crazy. I was stressed, you know, whatever it was, but, you know, but you have that ability to, you know, kind of uh, connect with them and kind of recalibrate them, if you will. Um, and then, you know, uh, you know, along with Beth, you know, we too, um, you know, you know, have screening questions in the beginning, you know, you really rely on the recruiters. We put, we put the ownership of the quality of hires on the recruiting team. And, you know, and we evaluate that in a 90 day turnover. So if you, if, if, if I lost Beth in 90 days, there could be something that I missed. You know, what did I miss in the interview? We go back and evaluate that one, just from a coaching standpoint, not, not from a, aha, you know, I caught you, you know, you missed something. Right. Maybe. You know, it, that's not the case, you know, you know, it, it, it's, it's from a learning standpoint. And so when they when they take that ownership and, and they also get recognized for it. Right. You know, there's a, there's a lot of pride in, in hiring people. And, you know, and you just see a, you know, much more consistency in the hire. So, you know, so the recruiter interview is really, really, really important. You know, there's an assessment that go, that's involved. It's, you know, the assess, the assessment and the background check, you know, help us make the hiring decision. It's not black and white. In that sense, and then at the end of the day, it really is the general manager's interview and the recruiter's interview, um, or if you're in the corporate office, the hiring manager's interview and the recruiter's interview that uh, determines if we're going to move forward with you. Very good. 
Um, I think I already know your answers to this one, but when it comes to hiring a GM externally or to promote someone within or internally, what are some successes that you've had with internal that would work or that have worked and those that didn't work out? David, you take that. You got so many. Sure. <laughs> I can jump in on this one. So we we have hired some direct hired general managers and we we have had success. You know, um, it's it's 50-50. You know, you have to be a very flexible company when you do that. You have to be forgiving. You you know, you can you can train them up, but like you know, like training is eight weeks. You know, you can't come out of eight weeks training and run an eleven million dollar store that's open to one o'clock on Fridays and Saturdays, and you're leaving right. at three. You know, you you just you you know, it it literally takes um, a general manager that goes through our system you know, probably a good six to nine months to where they're kind of comfortable, you know, and they, and they under, uh, they understand everything. You know, we, we hired this high potential a long time ago. Uh, he was a regional from Darden and, uh, we brought him in with the expectation that he's going to fast track to a GM spot. And, you know, we had an opportunity in three months and he said no. And, and, and we were paying him GM money already. And we're like, whoa, what's going on? And he's like, I don't know everything yet. I can't run this. I need to, I need more time. And it was probably about another four months that another GM opportunity came. And, you know, so he was seven months in the, you know, um, in the saddle, you know, working for Dave and Buster's and, you know, became a general manager, blew through the GM ranks, became a regional in the, you know, two years and then moved on to become a vice president of operations, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe would not have had that success if this individual, you know, jumped that, you know, uh, the glory of having your name on the door and this is my store. And I'm, and, and, and that store that, you know, we, we're promoting them to was a $14 million store. It's a huge store. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, there, you know, you definitely want to take your time internally. And, and, uh, and w when you have somebody internally, you know, you know, most companies have a process that they go through. We have a, lead, a leadership camp where, you know, you have mo many executives taking time away from the day to come talk to the up and growing talent and, you know, spend one on one time with them. You know, you have, you know, subject matter experts in finance and HRs, you know, spending time with them with scenarios and coaching, you know, to really kind of, you know, make sure that, you know, their skills are honed and, and they're evaluated, right? You know, I tell everybody, everything's an interview. You're always being interviewed. You know, if I walk into the CEO's office, he's eyeballing me. You know, it's, you know, everyone's, you know, they're just, it's just what it is. It's the nature of our game. Um, externally, you know, we've had, you know, you know, we've had, we're probably 50 50, you know, but again, it's just, you know, uh, being patient, you know, because their training's, their training's ongoing. Their training's going to be a year long training and, you know, making sure that they have the support that they need. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, but making sure that they have the support that they need um, ongoing is imperative. What great wisdom of, of the example you use for him to say at four months, I'm not ready. Uh, most most people wouldn't have the ego that would allow them to say, right. no, 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 wait, wait. So, yeah, it's great. Or would be nervous to say no, um, because you said right. he was already paying him GM money, right? So I would mm -hmm. be like, oh, gosh, is this the expectation already? Do I need to make it happen, you know, yeah. and stumble along as I go? Or, you know, should I just like throw myself to the, that's where I would be trying to evaluate. But that's brilliant. I mean, that's, that's very smart. <laughs> what a very smart person. Um, let's see. David, um, the roles of a general manager can be very wide. Um, we know that as Dave and Buster's grew from two to 10, then 20 locations and more and all over the U.S., how did the role of a GM evolve? So the 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 role evolved to where we ultimately want them to be the mayor of the town. Right. But when you're starting out, you know, and you're you know, two stores, uh, you know, we, you know, funny story, you know, when we opened up our first store, uh, you know, in Stemmons a long time ago, Buster's interviewed by Dallas and, you know, we, we started getting some success with Dallas newspaper and, uh, and they're like, you know, how's your independent restaurant doing? And Buster's is like, no, no, we're a chain. Oh, you have other locations. You know, where are they? No, no, they're, they're not there yet. They're coming, <laughs> you know, and, you know, you know, and, and, you know, as we became that chain, 
you know, the, 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 the GM, you know, focused on the four walls initially, you know, internally, and then they started, you know, expanding to outside the four walls to try to drive sales. And then ultimately, you know, I've had a a couple of conversations with some of our regionals now when they were able to step into that regional role is when they were, uh, uh, they had the ability to step out of the GM role within their own four walls and delegate that to Dave or delegate that to Tiffany and then sit back and play executive coach, you know, within their team there, which uh, which developed the people below them. And so now the store is really well oiled and that freed them up to go out to, you know, the Taste of Dallas or Taste of Addison and, you know, start doing some, you know, you know, uh, sitting on, you know, some of the, you know, the local chamber of commerce, you know, or sitting on certain boards just locally spreading the business that way. And so, you know, I think it's I think it's, you know, truly like a, a general manager, you know, when <clears throat> and there's there's evolutions of a general manager. But when you get there, you're the CEO, you know, <clears throat> you know, of your store and you're kind of, you know, the little mayor of the town, um, you know, ideally. That is so great, David. Uh, th- like that's a benchmark that you could put out there that said, I mean, I, I, I have an article going on in my head that, you know, you've arrived in your leadership spot when you can step away. Yeah. Like that, that's that's what they need to aspire to. That And that's how they would be able to self-measure. That's very exciting. We, we had a general manager one who was really, really, really talented, was a regional for another concept, came in, but could not delegate or would not delegate for fear of, you know, uh, losing, you know, value. And uh-huh. ultim- ultimately that was, you know, his demise. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the fact that the building didn't run the same when he left. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What skills do you think are needed to be learned on the job in the specific example of, you know, as your company is growing? Well, um, they, have, you have to, you have to you know, be able to adapt. You know, yeah. you, you, you have to be able to shift gears quickly and come up to speed quickly. Um, you know, at like, you know, some of the challenges that we're dealing with now, you know, just the labor shortage, mm-hmm. you know, they, they, they have to adapt, you know, we're adapting with technology, you know, improving, you know, to where, you know, guests can, if they want to have a, you know, contactless experience, they can, and they can, you know, order, they can get their drinks, they can, you know, pay without having to, you know, um, you know, interact with someone. However, we have somebody there interacting with them just six feet away. Right. Just like letting them know that I'm here for you, you know, whatever you need. And if they don't want you, great. But then if they do, you know, you know we were able to you know, provide that experience. But, you know, the the adapt and overcome, you know, uh, thought process is so huge right now. And, you know, and it's really a testament to how talented our operators really are, because, you know, they're, they're so creative and problem solving. And and it's one of the things that makes them, you know, great operators. I, I can't tell you how many, like we, we, we have general managers where, with law degrees. We have, a, you know, a general manager that's a rocket scientist. We, we have, a, you know, a, a general manager that, you know, you know, could be a doctor. I mean, there, there's so many, right? But they didn't want to do that. They didn't want to be in an office. They wanted to be on the floors, you know, driving sales, you know, impacting the guests, developing their employees. And with that just creative mindset, you know, uh, has been a blessing through, you know, the, the past two years with COVID and the things that they have that had to come up with to um, operate in this environment. And I, I, yeah, I, I would agree. Adapt quickly. And I want to just give a, not a quote, but a book to read that I think is so fantastic because as people are coming up through the ranks or even when they get in that top spot leadership position, the book, What Got You Here Won't Get You There is so incredible because all the things like leaders don't sometimes understand that they do need to be vulnerable. They don't always have to be right. They It's better lots of times, even if they have the answer to ask, you know, when the team member says, hey, boss, uh, what should I do here? The better thing for the boss to say is, what do you think we should mm-hmm. do? Mm-hmm. And when leaders begin to learn that, they begin to really accelerate the growth of others. And that's when they can step away. But so what got you here won't get you there. I was looking on my shelf a minute ago thinking I can't remember 
the author's name, but it is so good. And I don't think anybody that's in a GM position, new or especially old ones, I think they should read it. It'll be one of the best reads of the year or listen if you're an audible. I'm an audible person too. So 